What's up guys, Subzeric here. I am back from the TFT Vegas Open. If you weren't there or if you didn't watch online, you missed an absolutely insane tournament. And I wanted to today go over the player who performed the strongest in the entire tournament. This was Broccoli, who over all of the rounds of the tournament amassed 128 points, eight points ahead of Ash Moo, ahead of all of these other players who made it to the finals with him as well. Of course, just making it to the finals means you're going to score more points than everyone else, but still he gapped the rest of uh, everyone who, who played in the tournament. He didn't end up actually winning the tournament because, of course, we're playing checkmate format for the finals, which was incredibly hype and a decision that I will defend to death because I was sitting there in the arena seeing the crowd go crazy. I myself was going crazy because so much of this tournament came down to a single fight, uh, you know, a single round. Uh, and I mean, that's that's just incredibly hype. Um, but I wanted to go over this game in specific, game three of the final lobby, uh, because I think Broccoli really, really, really had an insanely good meta read, and obviously it shows in his scores and how well he did in this tournament. Uh, and I think, it, you know, it was just really special what he brought together. It, it made so much sense that he almost breezed to the final lobby, because, like, how would you... Not if you're a beast of a player and you have an amazing meta read. You know, people talk about TFT being all luck, all skill. Okay, most people don't say all skill. But people talk about TFT being all luck. Um, but uh, I, I really do think, uh, you know, Broccoli did amazing preparation. And when you do amazing preparation in TFT, uh, you, uh, you do very well. So we're going to focus on Broccoli's POV. Blistering Strikes help us on the way Cybernetic Bulk. Um, I do think uh, these these two augments are really, really solid. Helps on the way and Cyber Bulk here. Curious to see what he goes for. Yeah, he just rolls the bris blistering strikes. I can't see exactly what his items are, but yeah, help is on the way. An amazing, amazing augment. Um, but yeah, this is, of course, the main broadcast because players didn't get to broadcast their own individual POVs. So we will be watching main broadcast for this game. Like I said, we're going to be focusing on uh, what Broccoli did in this game. Uh, so, you know, I'll be tracking him on the right side here. Uh, but I do think, you know, well, we can we can look at other players POVs and see what happened. But yeah, Vegas was an absolutely amazing tournament. I sadly kind of ran it down in the tournament. I think my prep was actually fine, but I just kind of uh, was not used to a land environment whatsoever and did not play my best. Uh, and, you know, I also could have been more prepared. I mean, if you if you go to my lull chest and look at my rank, you'll see that I am not a uh, challenger right now. I've definitely struggled with this set a bit, though, to be fair, Ashmu, who made it to the final lobby, is also like D3 going into the tournament. So it's, it, you know, it's kind of whatever. Uh, but yeah, I'm th this tournament absolutely blew me away. I had a ton of fun. I do want to chat more just about uh, my Vegas LAN experience and all that kind of stuff. But I want to save that for another video. Maybe I'll put it out tomorrow or something like that uh because I, I do want to just talk about everything that happened but i wanted this video to just focus on broccoli and his preparation and how he played in this tournament and we we can see right now already the the signs of what broccoli has done in many of his games in this tournament so you look he's 90 hp right now two law streak broccoli really 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 likes this law streak stage two uh strategy he does this in a ton of his games uh, and part of the reason why he goes for this Lost Streak strategy is because it allows him to pick up uh, potentially a spatula off carousel, either stage two or stage three carousel. You'll see actually in this carousel, I believe there's no spatula. I don't think there's a spatula on stage three carousel either. Uh, you know, it's it's never bad to go for something like a Lost Streak here. Uh, and you'll also sort of see, uh, you know, in, in his augment selection, right, the, uh, the support augment help is on the way. That gives you a support item after a certain amount of rounds. Uh, that allows him to lean into Lost Streak really well, play for this Lost Streak, and then spike really, really hard stage 3, stage 4, uh, and put himself in an amazing spot. Also, speaking of amazing spot, isn't this such a cool spot for Malala where he gets to play the double Kaisa 2s? Uh, man, I, I didn't get to see, like, all of this was on, like, a separate monitor. Like, I just saw, like, one main monitor with the, like, main, uh, what they were looking at. Then this was on, like, a separate monitor that was further away that was, like, sort of hard for me to see because, like, those two split screens in that was uh, wild. But I think they knocked it out of the park with the, the broadcast on this, right? But yeah, as you'll, you'll see, Broccoli continues to Lost Streak. He's 30 gold here. You also, if you paid attention uh, when you saw what units he was holding, it's no surprise that if he wants to lean into this Lost Streak style, the units that he was holding was just Cassante and uh, Aphelios here. We'll see Kevin Parker also has this insane five hearts steal spot. And I believe, I don't know, Kevin Parker wasn't at checkmate at this point. This was game three, so no one was at checkmate. But yeah, we'll finally tune into Broccoli and look at this spot. Okay, so I really want to just analyze everything that's going on here. Um, so one, 
we're, we're 40 gold here. We have only held on to the hard steel unit. So almost like full opened, but held on to hard steel for potential to hire all hard steel. Also, let's take a look at our item slams. Infinity Edge slammed, and then Bramble Vest slammed, as well as our two items, and then we have Glove plus Cloak open. This Infinity Edge item, I think, is in an amazing meta read, uh, right, you know, on, on the current patch, uh, because it, it actually falls into uh, two, and I'll make my thing go, I mean, you're not gonna be able to see the, the players uh, either way, just because my, my face is covering up the player that's up here, but like, I don't know, I guess, now you can see their names, even though you can't see them. You can see the bottom right player, it's all good. Um, but I think this, is, this IE item is actually an incredible slam in the current meta um, because it, it allows you to flex between, I would say, what the two strongest lines are right now. He also holds on to these double ergots. Uh, but yeah, the two strongest lines, in my opinion, are sort of this like crowd diver or edgelord flex where you play around, uh, you know, the, the uh, Yone or the Zed or the Viego, or you can flex into, and now we have a spatula, which unlocks uh, this one of the strongest comps, probably the strongest comp in the game, which is vertical true damage, uh, which you know allows you to play for a true damage Caitlyn, potentially true damage Ezreal, both uh, really, really good holders of IE, um, and then also play around true damage Akali, who could, you know, even if you have more IEs, then, then play around that. But yeah, I had the displeasure of playing against a true damage um, Akali in this tournament. I didn't actually realize how broken True Damage Akali was when I was playing this tournament. Uh, and one, we will uh, look at augments again once again. Broccoli up here. Not today. Very solid augment. Uh, big grab bag. Great for uh, extra components and crown guarded. I assume we'll auto roll crown guarded. Uh, and he actually rerolls the Edge of Night uh, augment as well. Uh, you get to know your enemy in big grab bag here. I wonder if it's big grab bag. It's probably big grab bag to dig for a sword here, I would think. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly uh, what all of his choices were. Yeah, he does take big grab bag. And then we can see up here his uh, support uh, item possibilities, Randoins, Locket, Aegis, and Zephyr. I mean, ugh, almost all the support items are really good, so I actually don't know what he takes in this position. Like, they're, they're all pretty even. If we know we're going to play towards vertical true damage, I feel like something as like Zeke's would be amazing, but we don't have that option. Aegis might be solid to hit both, like, the Akali and, uh, like, potential Kaelin in back. I mean, Zephyr's also just kind of broken. I could see, like, Aegis or Zephyr. I don't know. I, I, the only one I would be uh, kind of shocked, and I, I can't actually see what he ended up picking there. I'd be surprised if he picked Randoids, because I think Randoids is a little underwhelming, but... I, I wouldn't, like, lose my mind. Um, but yeah, I think he just takes a solid augment there. The grab bag is really nice to get him to that sword so that he can build true damage emblem because that's his priority at this point, making true damage here. And as you'll see, what did he, did he end up picking? No, yeah, he, he picked up the, the which I forgot what this item is even called. Uh, and now he's just going to start slamming stuff. Another really, really just, like, you you slam this so often in this tournament. Evan Trowd uh, and Hodge. These are these are S tier slams for everything, and he gets to make the true damage that. Like if you look at the items that Broccoli has slammed in this game, these are the items that he was angling to slam almost every single game this tournament, and these are like the S tier slams. It's basically Hodge, Evan Trowd, i.e. Uh, are like they're they're all up there in, in the S tier as some of the best items that you can possibly slam. Uh, and then obviously the true damage spat is amazing. So Broccoli at this point, 58 HP. He just finally won a fight at 3-2. That was his first win. Also just, you know, hats off to Broccoli for maintaining the five loss streak. It can be very difficult in lobbies uh, like this where, you know, like, People are going to be obviously actively scouting and trying to grief your lost streak potentially. This is a lobby with, uh, you know, $100,000 on the line, a little bit more if you count all the prizing down to eighth place. So, you know, the difference between you keeping your lost streak and losing your lost streak could be the difference of, you know, $90,000 or something like that. So, you know, definitely uh, a bunch of sweaty players in this lobby. We'll see at the bottom here, Broccoli's board. Once again, he found that Urgot too. And the Misfortune, too, which really, really spiked his board. It might be a Chosen Misfortune, because I know he had the Urgot pair earlier, and then everything else is one star, so probably Chosen Misfortune. Uh, sadly, we didn't get to see, like, how much gold he rolled on six or something like that, but I wouldn't be shocked if he rolled a bit on six to really stabilize his board 3-2 uh, so that he can make it to level seven, level eight, level nine. Um, but yeah, this this was the game plan from Broccoli. Lost Streak, stage two. Uh, look for Spatulas. He ended up getting dropped a Spatula this game off of minions, but... The Lost Streak allows him to, if there's ever a spatula on Carousel, almost like guarantee it, um, and then play into Vertical True Damage, which is just it's so insane in, the, in this meta, and you will see into this game why it is so insane. Also, using I, what I would assume is rolling at 3-2 to play around a 3-cost headliner to stabilize his board. Uh, Misfortune, obviously a great one. Uh, you also, you know, saw who's playing around the Urgot. He has the opportunity to play around a, like, Samira as well. 
Uh, you know, maybe if he hits like a Kaisa, he could play around that. But the three costs really, really stabilize the board and are going to slingshot him from this loss streak into a win streak. As you can see now, he is three win streaks. So he went six loss into potentially four win, which would be perfect uh, streaking here. You know, the full loss streak into potentially the full win streak. Um, so yeah, I mean, just immaculate game so far from Broccoli. Got some really, really nice components. I will say that's probably the most high roll part is him hitting the components that allow him to make such solid items, the Hodge, i.e. Evan Shroud, uh, and the true damage spat, and then also obviously just getting the spat. But like I said, he lost streaks to give himself the opportunity to high roll that spat, and TFT is so much about allowing yourself to, putting yourself in the position to high roll, right? So many people say, oh my god, I can't believe this player high rolled, but it's very likely that, you know, a worse player would never have even put themselves in the position to high roll, like all the games where Broccoli lost streaked and then got a spat off of Carousel. You'll see, if you look over here at Broccoli's uh, HP and streak, he is uh, now level 7, 49 gold, very, very likely going toward a, a fast state. Also, I'll, I'll move ahead a little bit so you can see Ash move freak out because, man, watching this guy was an absolute treat. I had the uh, the privilege of meeting Ash Moo, really, really nice guy uh, at the event uh, and just so, so much fun to watch, right? All right. Top right here, once again, going to focus on Broccoli's items here. I don't really love Salvage Bin in a spot like this because our items are all so good. I think Little Buddies is an amazing augment, especially when you want to play into this vertical true damage line um, because you want to play a lot of the, you know, the shitter true damage units. You want to play the Senna, you want to play the um, the Cannon. So, like, Little Buddies seems really, really nice here. So, I would just auto reroll these two and default to Little Buddies. Uh, he does also get blinked out. Wow, I don't actually know which one's better here. Little Buddies are blinked out. Um... These both seem amazing to me. I mean, Broccoli's played the line a million times, so I guess we're going to find out right now what's more bro what's more broken. And he, it looks like he thinks it's blinged out, which uh, makes a lot of sense to me because, you know, you're going to be getting that value onto all of your units. And if you think about it, right, blinged out is 10% uh, attack speed per item plus the HP. Um, and Little Buddies, like, if, if we just compare them apples to apples, we can go back. Uh, yeah, it, it's basically the exact... Uh, well, it's not the exact thing. It's 8, it's eight and 100, and Little Buddies is 110. Um, so like little buddies is equivalent is better than three items. If you have three, three bad units in the problem is you probably only really want to play the Senna and Kennen. I'm not sure if there's another like quote unquote bad unit that you want to play. So you're probably only getting the 20 and 200, uh, versus blinged out where you can easily get the 324 from putting three items on a unit though. Uh, you know, not all of your four costs are going to have three items. I would think, uh, in any case, we're on board with uh, Kevin Parker, who I was so afraid that Kevin Parker was just going to win this game. I He had a very, very strong start to the to the day. And I mean, honestly, played very well consistently across the day. I, I think there were spots where he could definitely have potentially won the tournament, though I don't, you know, I, I was mostly looking for an NA perspective, so I don't remember exactly what those were. But I mean, I think he played incredibly well. And, uh, you know, that, that can be seen in the final scores, right? He was like, what, third or fourth in, like, score overall when I was looking at the score sheet earlier. So uh, a really, really good tournament by Kevin Parker. A really great tournament by all of uh, Europe, really. Pretty incredible. Uh, we get to look in with Broccoli again here. And as you can see now, he is level 8, 30 gold at 4-3. So he just leveled up here. Found this a Mumu 2, ended up selling the Urgot here. And as you can see, he started pivoting into some of these true damages here. So he has four true damage in, playing around this random Vex and Bard, the Bard for Jazz, uh, the Vex for Emo, and then potentially Executioner later, and then playing around this Sentinel Guardian up front line. Really, really interesting here, actually. I didn't catch this because I, I didn't get to see Broccoli's board, but this is a board where I'm surprised where he's actually not rolling. He's 30 gold level 8 here, and his board's solid for sure. Like, it is definitely not bad, uh, but I really, especially when I'm low in spots like this, really want to be playing around a 4-cost headliner. Uh, so it's really, really cool to see Broccoli actually playing around the 3-cost headliner and say, you know what, my board's good enough, maybe I can even fast 9 from this spot. Uh, you know, like I said, the value of that true damage emblem and playing around vertical true damage is so, so high that I would not even be shocked if he can use a streak here. So let's keep an eye on the right side for Broccoli's uh, Econ and if he ends up rolling, uh, you know, at something like 4-5 here once they flash his Econ up. Oh, yes, and we will. We now do see at 4-5, so we wanted to Econ up as much as possible, and now he's going to roll down here for his board, and he finds it. He finds the Caitlyn here. Ideally, you want to actually arcade Caitlyn here, uh, or it's called 8-bit. I always want to call it arcade because it has the arcade cabinet. But yeah, ideally, you want... Um, 8-bit Caitlyn, because you already have Rapid Fire in from the Senna, but look at the damage that this uh, this Rapid Fire Caitlyn does. Caitlyn with true damage spat is absolutely a menace. Like I said, you know, it fits really easily into the comp because you're already playing a Rapid Fire unit, so if you get that 8-bit uh, Caitlyn, then it fits in beautifully. But as you can see now, Broccoli, 6 loss streak into 8 win streak. 
spiked the board at the perfect moment at 4-5, greeted just a couple of rounds. It's, it's actually very possible that what Broccoli did is he scouted at 4-2, and saw that his matchups weren't very strong, uh, like the people that he was fighting weren't uh, incredibly strong, and so he knew that he could greed actually until 4-5, and then actually roll down there at 4-5 when he had someone stronger in his pool. I can't say 100% what was going through his mind, but I would not be shocked at all if, if that was his thinking, that he knew that he could greed those two rounds, and I mean, look, eight win streak here. Does it get broken? No, it is a nine win streak for Broccoli, and I mean, you can see why this guy was one of the most, no, not one of the most, he was the most consistent performer in the entire tournament by far. Um, you know, the full loss streak and a full win streak like this, knowing exactly when to spike his board, uh, knowing how to, you know, play immediately with that spatula into the strongest line. Uh, you know, uh, how how would other people like even be beating this guy, you know? Uh, especially when he plays into even weaker lobbies, which, you know, wouldn't be able to beat this really, really strong true damage board that he's put together. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely insane performance by Broccoli and we'll continue to see through the rest of this game how his board evolves what he ends up playing around the, uh, the itemization decisions that he makes uh, I know he put that IE what was the second item he put it did he go IE Hodge I think he did go IE Hodge onto that Caitlyn which you know ideally the Hodge would go onto the Akali um, but obviously having a three item Caitlyn is really the highest priority on board with Ashmu here who also had a really really solid uh, spot it looks like uh, this game yeah 59 HP sadly on a three loss streak but he's just going the fastest nine of his life yeah look at and then look at this counter in the bottom left there it showed zero gold zero gold to roll like he's actually just fast nine found the it looks like I mean because he spent zero gold rolling must mean he naturaled the Ezreal headliner and just said okay I'm I'm going fast nine from this spot which makes a lot of sense here um, so yeah nice little check in with the players man this uh this player Zaza he was actually in my first lobby um, and, you know, I saw, oh shit, he's in the, the final lobby. This guy's cracked and obviously he is cracked, but he just had the worst day of TFT. Uh, I think his scores were like 7-7, seven, 8-8, seven, eight, 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 or something like that. Just just an absolutely, I mean, I don't think he'll be too disappointed because eighth in the Vegas land is still a decent chunk of cash. Um, so, you know, nothing, uh, nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Absolutely respect this guy for sure. Humbug ends up dying here. Humbug also someone who had a really rough start, but had an absolutely legendary game of TFT. Maybe we'll VOD review that. Though I know we got a new patch coming out soon. So I wonder if people really care too, too much about like VOD reviews of, of previous patches, even though this tournament was absolutely insane. Another IE picked up for Broccoli here and you'll say, okay, another IE. Interesting. Uh, you can also let's, let's check in with him here. We can see on the bottom here, everything that he's going on. So yes, it was the Hodge IE on Caitlyn. He has actually found the uh, Akali, the true damage Akali, of course, and found a Kiana, which he was able to TG. He's taking this IE for the final Akali item. Boom, look how beautiful those, the Hodge IE just chef's kiss on this Akali unit. The Giant Slayer completely fine as well, uh, getting in the vertical true damage here now with the Kiana, and then even just keeping a random Garen in uh, as a uh, Sentinel, you know, this late into the game, uh, just to just to beef up his frontline a bit. Absolutely uh, huge in, in spots like this. But yeah, you'll see. Uh, you know, he continues. He's on the 12 streak here. He's getting great value out of this uh, this support item, which I still don't remember what it's called. So, I mean, I, I said it earlier in the video, um, but for some reason, it's like breaking my brain right now. But yeah, his board is just absolutely insane. KC double here with the last stand. Uh, just such a fun augment to watch in tournament, especially in spots like this. But I believe, yeah, I mean, it looks like he's absolutely getting demolished by Kevin Parker, who was able to go level eight this game, uh, or level nine this game. Casey Double kind of stuck at level eight. Ashmu also on a streak. So we have our two North American players at the top in HP. Cause, cause I mean, come on. I mean, come on. He is, I, I will. I will say for all my EU viewers out there, I kind of have to stop flaming EU because EU had an amazing performance in this tournament, uh, arguably better than North America's, even though NA won uh, because EU just had, you know, obviously less players because not as many people can travel from EU to NA. Um, and an amazing performance, uh, a better performance than North America at the most recent world championship. So I might have to stop flaming EU. It makes me a little bit sad because I want to just flame EU for all the years of... Uh, NA getting flamed by EU in League of Legends, but, uh, you know, EU has really, really been on the up and up for the last uh, few sets. You know, they had a, a few sets where they were definitely, you know, you looked at their performance of the World Championship and it was like they were just by far the worst region, but really, really up on the up and up recently, which is it's cool to see for sure. I mean, it's nice to have more regional parity in, uh, in something like TFT. Ashmu and uh, Kevin Parker changed their boards up a bit. And the, the other nice thing about Broccoli Spot um, and just playing into this true damage line in general is that it's kind of easy to play, right? Like if you're 
If you're a noob and you want a comp to play, verticals are the easiest to play. Obviously, broccoli is, is not a noob, uh, but it's like very easy to just continue to build your board up and up and up more and more and more uh, true damage units than it is to do something uh, like this where, you know, you're like potentially full of pivoting your board. Like you look at Broccoli's board and it really hasn't changed too much. He's just built up extra true damage units and then found better supportive units to add. So he has this uh, this Alawi on the board now, who's a really, really solid tank. He's got this uh, Zed on the board, who's just another like decent damage built uh, dealer. And it's a uh, crowd diver for the Kiana. So yeah, he's just continued to just like slowly build up the board. You can see just how much work this Caitlyn puts in. It's just not, it is just not normally how much this Caitlyn does. Uh, Broccoli just gets to chill and roll so much gold at level nine here to try to upgrade his board. He sees that everyone else is upgrading their board and now it's just Ashmu and Broccoli, the two North American, two of the four North American representatives uh, who both, you know, just absolutely amazing job uh, this tourney. Uh, Ashmu, you know, trying to get to that slightly more, uh, or, or the very capped, you know, board where he's playing around the Ezreals, but it's it's just not enough to beat this insane true damage board. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I uh, hope it showed you guys an incredible line that can be played this uh, patch. I hope you guys enjoyed Vegas. I hope you guys watched it. Um, let me know if you want to see some more VOD reviews from Vegas, because uh, new patch, uh, the B patch is coming out tomorrow. So I'll probably do more content around that unless you guys are like going crazy about Vegas. I'll also probably do a video just retrospective on Vegas, uh, which will be like less VOD review type content, but more just like my thoughts on the event. Uh, is that me in the background? I was I was sitting behind Ashman. I saw a bald person, but I don't know if it was me. Um, like I was I, I was definitely like around here. That that might be me. I think that might be my bald head. That that looks like around where I was. It doesn't really matter, but it's kind of funny. That, that looks like about where I was. I I don't. That might not be me, though. I don't know if that's me, because I don't think I was wearing a white shirt. I think that's a different bald guy. In any case, I'll catch you guys later. Bye.